Hi everybody, this is Judy from Fox City's Quilt Company and this is Sunday from the Sewing Room where we give you some tips, tricks, and a few tutorials to help you with your sewing and quilting projects. If you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button below and tell your friends. So last week we went back to basics and I made, I'll reach for it here, the four patch block and I showed you how to make those seams nice and flat by spinning the back. Um, this is the simple four patch block that we did and this week we're going to be doing another simple block called the pinwheel block and again I am going to show you how to get that center seam nice and flat and how to make all of those points come together. So let me get started and show you how I do that. So as most of you know, when you go to make a half square triangle and a pinwheel block is four half square triangles all put together. So when you go to make your pinwheel block, um, you make two squares that are the same size. In this case, it is a five inch square that I used. And you are going to draw a line from diagonal to diagonal and sew a quarter inch on each side of the line like I've done here. I've used orange thread so that you can see my stitching. And then what you're simply going to do is cut it in half. And I will show you how I do that. You're gonna cut it in half right on that line that you drew, not on your stitch line. So once I do that, I will have two half square triangle blocks from one square, and I'm gonna press these to the dark. Then, I'm just going to set those aside. So then what I want to do is when you press them to the dark, you still have these dog ears and your block may not be perfectly square. So I am getting out my one of my favorite tools in my arsenal and it is my block lock ruler. And let me show you how that works. Um, and I'm sorry for the glare. Maybe I should uh, quick turn off this light and that might be better for you so that there's no glare. So what I'm going to do is, let me, I don't like that thread on there, is I am going to lay my block lock ruler on my half square triangle. This is a six and a half inch block lock ruler. This is my most used ruler in my arsenal. So what I'm gonna do is I lay my block lock ruler, the logo goes on the low or the light side of the fabric. And by the low side, I mean, the side where the seam was pressed away. So the dark side is the high side and you can kind of see that right there. So this is the low side, the light, and the dark is the high side. And then I am going to go ahead and I am going to trim these up. I want these to be four and a half inches. So I cut my blocks to five inches. Um, if you're doing a half square triangle block and they want you to cut it to uh, four and a half inches. Chances are they're telling you to cut four and seven eighths inches squares. I always cut mine a little bit bigger so that I have something to square up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this down. This locks right on that seam and I'm just going to pull that ruler down just a hair so that I have something to trim off on each side. And the reason that I don't do it perfect on this side, and let me get that trimmed off for you, um, the reason I don't do it perfect on the side the first time is because I want something square with which to square that block up. So now I know that this is nice and square. So all I simply do is slide that block lock ruler up so that the block is in the center. I'm going to just spin it around and then I am going to pull it down exactly to four and a half inches. So here is my four and there's my half mark. And over, over on this side, the four is harder to see because it's on black. And then there, here, here is my half inch line. So I am going to square that up. And I'm going to do that to all four of my half square triangles that I am cutting in order to make my pinwheel block. 
Okay, so I wanted to show you that I have my pinwheel block all laid out here. Let me show you how that works. So I uh, make sure that I have one that's facing up to the right and down to the right, and then down to the left and up to the left. And that's how I remember how to put my pinwheel blocks together. And then what I'm going to do now is I am going to put these right sides together. I'm gonna try and do this one-handed so I can show you. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to nest those seams just like that so that I have those perfectly aligned with each other. So there is one. And remember how I said last week, I always try to make sure that this seam, I can push this seam into the seam next to me. So that's gonna work out just fine. And I'm gonna do that for this one too. And then you can see that seam goes right into there. And then I'm just gonna chain stitch these. Let me get you to my machine here. And so you can see how I do this. I'm just gonna stitch one right after the other making sure that my um, seams are nested. And I am just going to, uh, I'm a little crooked here. Let me get this all straightened out. I'm not a pinner, um, but if you want to pin this, you certainly can. And again, I'm using orange thread so you can see what I'm doing here. So I am just going to start stitching this and I'm going to push that right up in there. And here comes the next one. I'm just going to take that. And I am going to push that right up in there. And then, I again, I just want to make sure that those seams are nesting. I can feel them nesting. And then I'm going to go ahead and push that right up in there and sew my quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm all done with that, and I'm going to snip these apart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my iron, and I am going to press this half to the dark, so this part right here. And then when I open this, I can get it open honestly. And then I am going to press this to the dark, and see how those points come together nicely when you nest your seams. So let me go to my iron. I will get those all nest. Uh, I will get those all pressed, and I'm going to come back here and show you how to put this together so you don't lose your points from here to here. So let me show you that again. You don't want to lose your points here, and you don't want to lose your points there. But let me go to the iron and get those pressed and I will come right back. Okay, so I've pressed my two halves. I have pressed this one to the dark, so to this triangle, and I've pressed this one to the dark, which is this triangle. Now what we're going to do is we are gonna lay those in half together, and you can see my orange stitching. But now here is what's tricky. You can nest these seams and um, you can feel them nest into each other. But we have a road map here. I got this thread in the way. Our road map is this intersection right here. Let me point to it with this. Okay, and you want to stitch just right inside that triangle. You don't want to stitch on it because you have to account for the bulk of your thread. You just really want to stitch one thread to the other side. And you can see this intersection, but what you can't see is the intersection below it. And this is where I would pin. And I am going to pin this in the direction that I'm going to sew it. So I'm going to sew from this end um, to this end. So I am going to insert this pin right into that intersection, and I'm gonna watch on the other side and make sure that it comes out at the other intersection. And it's just a little off, so I am going to do some adjustments and I'm going to try and pin that again. And that is spot on. Can you see where that pin is coming out? That is, nope, not quite, I moved it. 
Let me do that one more time. I'm going to pin it here and I want to take that straight in and out to that side and that is really, really good. And so I want to pin this parallel, not perpendicular, with my uh, with where I'm going to sew that seam. And the reason is, is because once my sewing machine and my thread gets closer, I'm going to pull this out as I go. I don't pin this way because there's a chance of this moving this way if you if you do that. But if I pin it parallel and not perpendicular, then the chances of that staying in there are exactly correct. So let me take this over to my sewing machine and let me and I'll come right back. Okay, so I have that all sewn together. You can see I hit my intersection here and I hit my intersection here. So when I open it up, I still have nice points. It looks so pretty. So now, do you remember last week when I told you about pressing? If I were to press this all one way, look at that huge lump. That would be awful. So what I'm going to do is just like I did last week, I'm going to take my stitches out from here up to where I sewed. Let me make sure that I can get that out. So I from here to here, and now I'm going to take them out on the other side as well from here to here. And let me get those two stitches out. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to spin this block just like we did before. And so when I do that, I am creating another little tiny pinwheel there. Do you see that? Right there. Okay. And so when I open this up and I press it just like this one here, you can see that there is no bulk there. It is nice and flat. And here is the back of that pinwheel. So look how nice that looks. And then here is the front. And all of those points came together very nicely. So thank you so much for watching this Back to Basics with the pinwheel block. It is such a pretty block. There's a lot you can do with it. Last week we did the four patch, this week the pinwheel, and we will come up with another great basic block for you next week. I'm Judy from Fox City's Quilt Company in Appleton, Wisconsin. This is Sunday from the Sewing Room. Thank you so much for watching us. Bye-bye now.